So this is our project, You Must Be Kidding, or I'm not going to try to pronounce it in Dutch and ruin it. Um, it's a three-year project that was led by MoVC in Holland and Diversity Media, and its aim is to counter online hate speech and discrimination, and they want to do that through the help of influencers. So uh, right now it's just the beginning, but once they get enough influencers on board, the aim is to get training going so that the influencers can interact with their followers and turn them into upsiders that want to be sensitive to discrimination and spread that. Yeah. So our research question, again, we're just at the beginning, so we had to, um, we were wondering what does an inventory of Dutch influencers look like, how is it organized, and how active are people, and how do they talk about discrimination and positivity? So from that, we had two main goals, map out the Dutch influencer ecosystem across platforms and understand the relationship between influencers and anti-discrimination discourse or positivity online. Um, we decided to look at three different platforms, mainly because you know YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook are the most used one. Um, and it was all about mapping, understanding uh, how the followers are interacting with each other and with the follower, the influencers, and exploring the discourse. So when we started our project, we were giving two data sets. Um, an initial data set from a Google research, which was a quick desktop research made uh, on Google to see who was big in the influencer scene in the Netherlands and upstanders. So I know it's a bit of an interesting term, but it was chosen by the researchers, and it's uh, used throughout this presentation to refer to the um, influencers that have been contacted already by the researchers. Uh, some of them have accepted already, some of them haven't, but that's what they're working on right now. Um, and we just thought that we needed to be a little bit more for, thorough with the data we were using. So before uh, inquiring into um, YouTube and uh, Instagram, we decided to look at reliable sources such as Social Baker for um, YouTube and Statista for uh, Instagram. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go into the YouTube platform and our methodology. Oh, jeez. That, yeah, that was bound to happen. Uh, how do I get back? It's here. It's here. I know it was by accident. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. So yeah, um, we mapped uh, YouTube using the before mentioned data sets. We used the upstanders list uh, provided by the research team. We used their Google research list also provided by the research team. And we used a list of the 10 um, most followed um, YouTubers on social bakers based in the Netherlands. Um, what we had to do that then is to extract the account IDs of those YouTubers. Not all influencers had YouTube accounts. Um, the account ID is the end of the URL. So we had to extract that manually uh, and make a list to then insert that list into the channel network tool. This tool um, helps us to create a network of channels which shows uh, their connections by featured channels and subscriptions. So we crawled that data and afterwards um, had a Gephi visualization data file. So we inserted that into Gephi. Um, it was massive, so it took a lot of time. We used different seed connections to create different maps. Um, but this tool helped us to process and visualize our data and also analyze um, the clusters which uh, Gephi showed us by using different kind of filters and variations. Uh, but for that, we mainly used the Force Atlas and Force Atlas 1, for those of you who know that tool. But otherwise, you can see that later on in our report. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so as we've mentioned, um, our main um, goals and achievements within um, the network analysis of YouTube was to um, actually map out the, the ecosystem surrounding the different lists of um, influencers that we had, um, both provided by the projects and also which we found through our own research. Um, and these, so we mainly um, looked at the different networks um, individually. Um, so those are the um, top Dutch influencers, um, the upstander influencers, and the uh, Google research list of influencers. Um, 
We don't really have time to go into them at any massive level of detail right now, um, but these are some examples of the visualizations which we produced. Um, so this is a network surrounding the um, top 10 um, Dutch influencers um, based on the social baker list that we used. Um, as you can see, um, we've highlighted um, certain Dutch channels and hopefully this will be useful for the project in terms of understanding some significant influences which aren't necessarily involved in the project at the moment. Um, we also mapped out the um, network surrounding the influencers who actually are involved in the project already and hopefully this will be useful for the project in terms of understanding where these influencers are placed and their significance within these networks too. Um, one particularly interesting uh, network visualization was one surrounding um, the Google research list of influencers which was already provided by the project. And actually within this network we could see um, certain thematic groups. Um, and this was especially useful when we actually isolated out the, um, the influencers who are involved in, uh, who are actually um, Dutch influencers. And you can see that there are various different categories. Um, so, such as electronic music, fashion, and, and beauty. Um, so just to summarize our main um, findings, um, actually, interestingly, um, the Instagram influence is not necessarily mirrored on YouTube. Um, upstanders don't show up in, in the network of the top influencers, which we found um, online through our online research. Um, and significant influencers show up in the mappings which are not involved in the project, so the project might actually want to consider getting in touch with those influencers. Can everyone hear me? It's getting faster. Uh, we're just going to brush... Yeah? Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm just going to brush through this because we're running out of time and still have two platforms to go. Um, we, uh, after recording both the Facebook one and the uh, YouTube one, moved on to Instagram. Uh, again, it was not about mapping the influencers this time, but their followers to see who was interacting with who, who was following who, and how many communities we could outline. Uh, we used to stand daily sets, Upstander and Statista, and we used this tool called Phantom Busters uh, Instagram Follower Collector. That was very long and very tedious, but if you have more questions about that, you're more than welcome to come and ask us. And we then use Giphy once again to visualize uh, the results and see how strong the ecosystem were with the upsenders, so the one we've contacted already, or um, the top influencers in the Netherlands. So what you can see here is the uh, map of the top 10 uh, Dutch influencers. And um, the clouds are their followers, so the shared followers. Um, the color is the community detection, so it shows which influencers share the same followers. You can, for example, uh, see that there is a cloud for uh, two Dutch rappers, the pink one, or the green one are more for daily life vloggers. They have a really uh, strong shared community, a really big one. And um, down there you can see also uh, three top ten influencers which don't have such a strong uh, shared community of followers. Yeah, so our main results for the top ten Dutch influencers are half of these uh, influencers are not only on social media, they've gained notoriety through music, sports and TV for example. And uh, there are strong following follower communities um, for specific topics, for example, like Dutch rap. And the upstanders, uh, we, so we did the same mapping uh, for the so-called upstanders. They were already involved in the project. And uh, as you can see, they have not yet built their communities as effectively as the top 10 influencers. But some of them are in process. For example, um, the green community on the, on the right side. Okay. So I'm introducing the Facebook part of the project and we try to answer the question which type of content do users engage with the most and if that content is positive. And basically we also use the two lists that our project leaders gave to us, the contacted and the Google research one, the Statista one and uh, our main tool was BuzzSumo. So we basically queried the 10 top influencers. Um, 
the 10 top results, I'm sorry. Um, we created the name of the influencers and we got the 10 top results. And um, as positive, we mean uh, anything that is empowering, anything against hate uh, speech or discrimination. And as we'll see, I'll show you next, I'll show you two tables um, of 20 out of 70 influencers that we analyzed. And the ones that have yellow background are the positive ones, or the ones that create positive content, the ones that have red are negative. And also it's important to mention the source systems, basically. I'll show you the table. This is the first, this is the second. And in both, the source systems is like, so the first uh, result, the, the, the result at the bottom is the one more distant from the top, and vice versa. And also I wanted to point out to two case studies, uh, which we found super interesting, two Dutch influencers that had the large number, the larger number of positive content, the two first, Nikki de Jager and Hubazai. Uh, so basically Nikki de Jager, she's a transgender and she came out um, recently. Uh, so we thought it was interesting because it showed, I don't know, acceptance and um, authenticity. And Ruba Zai, um, she's a Muslim influencer and she's promoting how hijab can be fashionable, religious and cultural. So after that, we analyzed among 70 the major influencers in the Netherlands and we, can, we could set up some categories, as we already said, such as vloggers, fashion, beauty, sports, music and arts. In each segment, we could noti notice that certain social causes are debated in cross segments. So same cause, same social cause, but different approaches, different approaches in, distinct, in distinctive fields of influence. So we mapped the keywords of every positive content and we made, made by these seven major influencers to identify the most popular social causes they stand up for. So which social causes they stand up for. And then we could see uh, each segment of influencer, um, which kind of most, most popular social causes they are talking about, they are creating content about, and especially which kind of positive content the public want to engage with. And then we can see sustainability, self-love, no hate speech, diversity against stereotypes. These are just one uh, sample of the examples we came across. And the takeaways. Uh, we're over time already, I know. I'm not going to talk much about the takeaways. I think what we did mostly now, and that was, that's what we realized, is collecting data, first of all, and um, conducting first visualizations, but now I think the job would be to deeper analyze them and interconnect them, because it, the, the, uh, well, well, we ran out of time to do the actual cross-platform analysis to interconnect them and see uh, where they're different and where they're the same. Yeah, that's basically it.